It's time for the Jim and Terry Show. The Jim and Terry Show. Jim coming through a slippery drive over. Needed to calm down and have some wholesome breakfast. And I had a wholesome breakfast. Oh, what'd, man. What'd you have? I had hummus, and I dipped into the hummus apples and, and tomatoes and carrots. And I had uh, <laughs> peanut butter on toast and a coffee. That's a good memory test. I wonder if that qualifies you for competency for the office of President of the United States. Trump would say I'm just brilliant. I can, <laughs> I, I, so. I can tell you again, too. Now, I'm going to show you this thing, and you have not had a chance to read it, I don't think. But I'm just curious about this whole topic of, well, let's read the title. How to switch off, colon, choose mindlessness over mindfulness for maximum stress relief. That makes sense to me. Somehow it does. So I had to go and poke around all this stuff. You know, in your Yahoo or whatever service you use, they always put a couple of articles that are of interest to you. You can select what areas you're interested in, whether it's the natural world or sports or human interest or movies or whatever. Well, I get this one every once in a while, and it has good stuff that is worth looking. So our obsession with mindfulness, which is focus, intentionality. I'm going to focus I'm going to be in this moment, present, 100% me. I'm not going to leave one brain cell unengaged in this moment, the Jim and Terry show. Versus? Yeah, the last show I was not here. <laughs> you were not. I really weren't. <laughs> you, I really weren't here. No, I really you're... wasn't here. <laughs> Whether you were or weren't. My phone kept pinging, and I kept wondering who's trying to get a hold of me because of my te- treacherous drive here. Well, that's that's a good thing. People checking up on you, if that's true. But that's not what it was. <laughs> I just need to know somebody's pinging me. That's all, which is not intentionality in this moment. However, when you do answer it, you are relieving your stress and wondering who would possibly be. Well, I think the stress me. released when I finally looked at my phone after our first show and noticed all I had to do is just nothing. Uh, then I was fine. I, I you know, uh, some of the stress went off. I'm one of those ones that I've been kind of tricked into needing my phone. And if I leave home without it, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll always be, where's my phone? Where's my phone? It's either you have in a this specific pocket, pocket or I know exactly where it is in the house. You do? Okay. Yeah, exactly where it is. I know where my wallet is. Exactly. I don't lose it. I know where it is. So your phone is with your wallet. Side by side, yes, they are. <laughs> okay. I'm not quite there. I like to leave my phone at home intentionally at times. Now, if I know my daughter's trying to get a hold of me, that would be a time I would take it with me. If I know someone's trying, if I know there's an appointment, if I know there's any reason to keep in touch with somebody, I will. But I like to leave it. And I know people try to get a hold of me every day. So that's the way it is. And, and now with the grandkids getting older, for instance, yesterday I was in a Bible study online and my son called me and said, would it be possible to pick up Noah from school? He wasn't, that's my grandson. Mm-hmm. He wasn't feeling well. So I dropped everything, went there, but I also knew I had a meeting after that. So I said, I'll try to get back for that. And I did get back for that. And so we did have the meeting. And then my neighbor Al pinged me. And uh, I had to say to my good friend, Debbie, uh, I won't be seeing you today. I'm not going out. Uh, all I meant is I'm not going to be driving and stuff. So I went over to Al. And that was a good visit. He, he put my CD on and played the whole thing. And they really liked it. So, well, yeah. that, well, we'll come back to that in a second. I'm going to go to this thing and say we choose um, I really do wander off. Don't you do. I? I, I'm going to stick with this one that our intentionality or focus in the moment, it might be a good exercise for you because you do go madly off in all directions quite mm. often. And that's just the latest, greatest, whatever shiny penny is in front of you. And I yep. agree that we get all distracted by stuff like that. So part of intentionality is to remove all the distractions. And that can be a trick. So it has to be the intention and follow through with action. Which is why I leave my phone sometimes. And I what I said was why I can't. 
Seems yeah, to. but I'm going to tackle that one by saying it's an addictive behavior now. Well, you have is, been conditioned. I, I do know certain people will be getting hold of me. Some people have to get a hold of me. And so I just gave up. I agree that some people have to. When you're in families um, and you're taken on that role, it is important. But my bottom line is, is the earth going to stop rotating if no. I don't answer it? No. It's uh, now, then I start winding it back. Well, what yeah. will happen if I don't? Well, somebody will have to phone somebody else. Well, somebody will have to get a hold. Or it can wait. And if it's not now, when? Oh, well, maybe a couple hours from now. Is that so bad? Not necessarily, well, but well, you, maybe. You heard that message from Al. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Because you couldn't get a hold of me. Are you all right? <laughs> so now I've put stress on somebody else. Well, all these things are things that we've conditioned. Uh, is it Dr. Phil who said we teach others how to treat us? In other words, if you're always picking up the phone, you've conditioned your audience yep. to pick up your phone and you're always available. Yep. And I do the opposite, which is my phone is not always in my pocket. I'm not always picking up the messages. And I've conditioned whoever that, you know, you pay your money, you take your chances. Yep. And part of that is control on my part, too, though. I think you're a control freak. I think it might be possible. So Is that why they were all tied up when I got here? Who's tied up? Oh, Kim and Jill. <laughs> I had to untie them. Yeah. Um, funny. None of those got involved in your breakfast this morning, though. That was me. Yes, yes. So sometimes you need focus and free from distraction. So if they had to be tied up to get your breakfast, would you have minded that? I didn't mind anyways. So Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I didn't even ask them why <laughs> There's they were tied up. There's a price to pay for freedom. Yeah, I didn't even ask why they were tied up. <laughs> All right. I, just, I like the title I, I of this. I just untied them. Mindlessness over mindfulness and emptying, choosing to empty your mind. I like that. So the images of someone, generic person, with a cloud where their brain should be, and with birds flying, seagulls, Jonathan Livingston's seagull. Great book. And all and I can do is see that, that beautiful red hair is covering her breasts. Uh, the, the <laughs> that, that, I would like to think that that's about the same as her shoulder, but maybe. Oh, 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 okay. okay, so well, where's your mind going? It's to? a cartoon, folks. It's a cartoon. <laughs> so. All right. So anyway, there's the article which is talking about how do we achieve stress release? Is it from focusing on this moment and burning incense and um, the um, cross-legged on the floor? Those are all techniques and devices. They may work to do that. So, what's the purpose? Relieve stress. How can you do it? Focus or empty? Fill with something else or take away? I don't know because I am <laughs> the most stressed human. Why I is know. that? I, well, I'm just, I, I, I don't know. Like, why do I wake up at 3 in the morning and that's it? I can't sleep anymore. I don't know. I, and the mind just starts yeah. right away instantaneously. Yeah, so maybe you're a victim of this one. I'll show you this one. We'll get two, two for one in this episode. How to survive an avalanche. Sometimes stress is like an avalanche. Yeah, and we really shouldn't be entertaining stress. I try not to. I don't like it. I don't like to be anxious for anything. Uh, Biblical precept. Uh, yeah, I don't like that, and I try not to. And uh, But sometimes I'll find myself getting anxious even watching a soccer game that has nothing to do with me, not even Canada. I might be just rooting for Argentina or something, for Messi to get a goal because he's Argentina. close to a record and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you say to yourself, why did I do that? So maybe some intentionality training for you. How to survive an avalanche is literally surviving an avalanche, but I happen to think... What could produce more stress than having the sky fall on you, like an avalanche coming down upon you? But they have some specific strategies, and I thought, like, like don't be skiing when it's avalanche season. Yeah, like season. don't go to the mountains. Yeah, yeah. Don't uh, yeah. go where the avalanches are. But you know, then I guess you don't go for the the big snow if you don't go to the mountains. Well, you see, different strokes for different folks. Yeah, I'm the type that would want that beautiful ski suit but then just sit around the fire drinking wine, <laughs> watching everybody else come down the hill. Well, at one point in our lives, we did go up to, and I can't remember the ski resort, but you and I would sit there while my yeah, yeah, kids yeah. and friends, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you came along for company, we would sit there and enjoy the inside lodge. Yeah, yeah the that's, what that's what I meant. That's what I meant, around that fire. 
inside the lodge and let yep. everybody get frozen to death and come in and they've had enough, and I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that must be a song. I feel fine. I feel fine. Um, one of the principles in surviving an avalanche, just to get back to the article, was to try to swim with it to the edges of the <laughs> slop. You know, it's coming down a channel or something. <laughs> Swim to the edge. Apparently, it's quite viscous, and you can actually yeah. swim. Throw me in a swimming pool, I'll sink. Okay, well, this is not going to work for you. <laughs> Strategies to survive an avalanche, whether that's literal or metaphorical. The anxiety and stress that you feel. Stress relief. Add intentionality or subtract the whole thing. I'll leave that with you. The Jim and Terry Show. Leaving it with you. Bye-bye for now. Bye. <laughs>